The views and opinions of the guest do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. This is Max Ader, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. And as always, I'm bringing you guys awesome interviews. And today it is an honor and a privilege to have Mr. Max Ater. He is... A musician and he has an ep entitled small town that's coming out october 12th featuring singles easy and light up this town on via prudential records so we're going to be talking to him about all this good stuff so max how's it going it's going great how are you doing doing awesome glad to have you on the show uh, let's jump right thanks into for this. having me. let's jump right into this good sir so for you how long did it take for you to discover your sound that you are happy with or are you still wanting to push outside that box. Yeah, you know, I think I'm always trying to discover new sounds. And with this latest record, we actually sat down, me and Carl Anderson, the producer of this record, we sat down and we really kind of decided that this was the direction we wanted to take with it. When I first started kind of getting into music and songwriting, it definitely wasn't this kind of uh, pop country vibe to it. It was was folk and it was like this jazz and it was all over the place. And it was just been in the past three years where I started to kind of narrow in with the help of this team on this on this sound we're really happy about. It, it has been a long time coming to reach this point, but I think it's also something that I hope evolves even further. And there's 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 flashes of like what's in the future in these songs. There's such a neat sort of mix between pop and country that it's with some of these singles like Light Up the Town it's, and uh, Easy. They're hard to like really pinpoint into a single genre, and we we wanted to do that on purpose. And I think it kind of leads this this big spectrum like a really big field open for us to play with in the future, which is really exciting. You have two singles, Easy and Light Up This Town. What led you to pick these songs to be singles, or what stood out about them when you was creating them? We, we got done with like three tracks, and one of the first, the two other three were Easy and Light Up This Town, and we loved them. And by the time we got done with the whole EP, we were like, all right, we really hit magic with these songs. So they kind of naturally unfolded as being the songs we felt were the most powerful. And for me as a songwriter, I consider them to be, out of the whole record, to be kind of my crowning achievements, which, funny enough, they were the hardest to write, but I think that, that's kind of how it goes. I wrote Let It Up This Town, rewrote it like, at least a dozen times, I think, and was finally really happy with the, with the, with the product we got. But yeah, I think they, they just kind of became with the final product, and we were like, hey, these are the, these are the ones we really, we really love. What's impressed you the most about making the EP Small Town? What's caught your eye about, if anything, possibly? For sure, it's going to be the players that we've had on this record. That's Jason Hartless and uh, Greg Smith and Carl Anderson. It was all four of us together put put our instruments on, on these songs. But having having them, just they are such unbelievable musicians. And Carl's engineering and production skills are just so top-notch, especially for, you know, Maine. When I, when I first started working with Carl, I was incredibly surprised that just 45 minutes from where I live in pretty rural Maine, there was a producer like him. And then to have a drummer and a bassist come on that are just, you know, legendary in their own right. That's, I think that's, I just appreciate so much the opportunity to have that caliber of, of playing on, on my songs that I've written. Oh yeah, for sure. And Jason Hartless with, uh, of course, Ted Nugent. So that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How long did it take to record the EP, and, and why not go the full length route? Because I know a lot of people are going the EP route these days. So it was kind of the initial decision to look at what, how the industry is going right now. What I've heard from the label is that, and what I've discovered too, is that you know, in our current, the current environment, we want you know, five really killer songs that we're really proud about. And it took about, I would say, I recorded Easy about a year, be- about a year before I met the guys at Prudential Records and before I signed with them. So I guess it was like two and a half, three years when all is said and done to kind of get this entire this entire record mixed and mastered. You mentioned you worked with Carl Anderson at uh, Anchor Studios in Wyndham, Maine. Uh, working with him, how hard did he push you? Oh my God, I hated him sometimes because <laughs> uh, I, I would think I was at my end of, of I was like, okay, I can't I can't do anymore. I don't know anymore, and he 
at that point we do another 30 takes and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh wait, no, hang on a sec. I can do it. So it was, it was painful and rewarding. Uh, it, and it was my first time actually working with a professional producer. He's one of the kindest souls I've ever met. And I've just come to love his technique and his process and him as a person. He's just amazing. And so I, I couldn't hate him for too long because it was just, <laughs> I, I walked out of the experience a better songwriter, a better musician, and honestly, a, a better person as far as making demos. I got to watch the entire process of him behind the mixing board, behind the computer, and ask him so many questions and annoy him until I, I walked away with stuff that I, I really felt that I could, you know, do at least a version of on my own before bringing it back into the studio. Also, how much has studio musicians like drummer Jason Hartless, who's worked, like I said, who's worked with Ted Nugent, Jolene Turner, and plus Mitch Ryder, Bassist Greg Smith, who's worked with Billy Joel, Ted Nugent, Alice Cooper, taught you or strengthened a musical part of you that you never thought would come out? So when we first started this record, we, we went in with kind of samples of the songs, whether it was the drum or we just played the bass and the keyboard. And for me, having this be like my first experience in the oh, this is great, this is fine, whatever. Like, I love the sound of it. And then to have them lay down their track and, and ship them off to us up here in Maine. And to hear the difference, the, and it, it, in some senses it's subtle, but it's so powerful, the difference of having professional live tracking musicians, it, it changed my perception of what it meant to produce and engineer a record that uh, we're going to watch Carl engineer with, with, with live musicians. So I think it, it, it brought out, it helped my ears understand better what it meant to, I guess, not rely too much on the sound, but a lot of people have at their fingertips, which is the, which is the libraries, the samples we have, and to understand that there's like this kind of a magical energy that comes with having live musicians on the track. Are there any songs off this five track EP that stand out more to you on it, if possibly, maybe? It would have to be Light Up This Town. I think we, the way that it was for me, I, I the way I focused on writing it was kind of a whole new challenge for me trying to not focus too much on the production of the song but understanding that at the end of production what was going to make the song come alive and i guess maybe that's just pride speaking but i think that it has definitely been a major accomplishment for me maybe just because it took so long to write but that's that, that song especially between jason hartless drumming and, and greg on the bass and uh watching watching carl just away at the at the files and, and bringing a shape to it that I, I didn't see I didn't really see happening like I could hear it in my head but to have that goal met and my dream met of what that song could sound like when it come to life was really so that was that was amazing what do you hope the fans take away from this EP or message you hope they hear while listening to this or just your music in general I hope they have fun I really do I mean I have so much fun making music and playing music and recording it and performing live that I hope when my fans hear this, these songs that they just, uh, they bop their head along and they, uh, they hear some really good music. How much growth musically have you seen yourself go through from the previous self-produced EP up till now to the release of the new one, Small Town EP, or has it just been more of a personal growth? Yeah, both. You know what? Both. I mean, I, I can't even begin to explain the, the new kind of, perspective i have on not only the process of recording but writing a kind of very specific musical style this is kind of pop country hybrid i when i recorded my first ep up till now that was just this weird smorgasbord of all these different sounds and songs and samples and um to kind of take my hands off the wheel and, and let that be dealt and obviously describe my ideas to the musicians on these but to have them kind of take that part of it. it it's been a it's been a huge learning experience for me and i think personally songwriting wise it's been it's been unbelievable i i when i first started writing until i got about halfway through small town i've always kind of had a, a dark vibe to my, my songwriting and i think the, my the single off the small town uh easy, it's called easy is uh is kind of the definition of that. It kind of has this darker vibe, but it started to kind of lighten up, and that was something from my personal life I started to see. I stopped being so just dark all the time, and it got, I think it shines for my music. I used to light up the town and stay a little longer, which, uh, yeah, I think are just, are just symptomatic of me uh, kind of 
When you're going into the studio, do you do anything differently during your writing and recording process to help keep your mind fresh and open to 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 new stuff? Do you do anything? Do you do anything to help you? Yeah, uh, sometimes I stop writing. I mean, one of the I can go in circles for days on end, weeks on end with the same song, and I found that I can really refresh my mind when I can just when I just let it go and I get out into Maine. That's why I love Maine because you can just escape out into nature, which is incredibly important to me as far as just refreshing the mind and, and coming back to it. And it's it's kind of weird because I get stuck all the time with songwriting. That's like I I I almost love getting stuck, and it means I'm working hard. But it, it and you have to have a lot of trust in yourself to be able to step away from it and understand that when you come back, you are going to have a new angle on things. Even if you don't realize it in the time, when you sit back down at the piano, sit back down at the computer, if you've taken time off, you will inevitably find a, find a new path forward with the song. And also, when I was, there, was, there was times, in, and the opposite of that is when I was in the studio and we reached these crunch periods, where it's like it was crunch time, totally, where I, had to, I was behind the mic, we decided we didn't like the phrase, had to just on the spot come up with new stuff, which is uh, just the other side of the spectrum on that. Equally as fun, maybe a little bit more stressful, but uh, definitely part of the process as well is kind of the in the moment, getting having to get something done, especially when we were getting close to the, the finish wrapping up. Each, each. What can fans expect at a show from you who have not got to see you play live as of yet, Max? I've been told I'm kind of quirky on stage. I like between songs, sometimes I go too far with my storytelling, but I guess people like it. I just, I love having fun and, and connecting with the people in the audience and then letting them know why I wrote the songs. And I, I'm so obsessive about the process of writing and just like little intricacies of it that for me, sharing that along with my, my songs themselves is a lot of fun. Usually they're really high energy. I try to keep them really high energy and make sure that nobody leaves without having a good time. I mean, you've been playing around Maine since about, I guess, around 2012, something like that. But do you yeah. do, do you like the digital era of recording albums to get music out quicker and plus social media to reach out to more fans that have not got to hear of you as of yet and plus up-and-coming bands to help them out? I have only really honestly known digital recording. I mean, I started in high school on these laptops that the schools provided on GarageBand and the libraries that were on those, so... All the resources I've been given have been kind of these more these, these digital platforms. And I think that you can, if you have the right idea in mind, you can get equally as stellar music from, from, that, kind of, from that kind of process. I think social media is a, uh, it's, it's definitely a double-edged sword because there's a lot of pressure on, on me as an artist, which um, I, I accept to you know, stay up to date because you have, that, you have that opportunity to stay up to date to keep fans up to date. And it's a lot of hard work, but you do get your message out there a lot, a lot quicker. You just have to, you have to go at it the right way. You have to really put your mind into each post and you have to make sure that you can really control your narrative a lot more these days. And I think you could, and that comes with a lot more responsibility, but at the same time, it's a lot more convenient as an artist. In your own opinion, what does Max Adder bring to the table for music? That's not out there as of right now. Good, sir. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, good question. I think that we've really worked hard with this latest record to find a middle ground between pop and country that isn't, I guess, I don't know, bro country, and it's still fun, and it's, uh, it's, not, it's not pandering, I suppose. We, we, we tended to focus more on just making tunes that were um, more universal, and that's something I've always focused on as a songwriter, too, is you know, how can I connect with the most people possible? And, and writing that and taking those really big ideas that I think we all have and kind of boiling them down into just these really nice chunks and being able to sing that. That's something that I've always, I've always worked towards and I take a lot of pride in when, when, I can actually, when I can actually do that. How much support locally do you get? Oh, my God. The local support I get has been the foundation for me as far as whenever I'm low on hope or inspiration. Um, I'm so grateful to be surrounded by family and friends that have supported me every step of the way and getting kudos from people close to me is like just feels so good and it and it and it means the world to me when people look at what I'm doing and 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 take it seriously I mean it's not Bath Maine my hometown isn't really a town for artists and so to kind of go down this route at first it was really it was tedious and it was it was humbling very humbling and to uh just be in maine in general i think it's, it's it's definitely a challenge and you want to kind of make it in the music industry but i think without without my local fans and and my family and my friends that i don't think any of it would have been possible 
Yeah, you're very right, good sir, because it seems like the music industry as of today is much tougher than it was, say, back in the 70s and 80s and even the early 90s. It's just crazy on it how it is. That way. Yeah. What made you want to become a musician? What was that spark for you, Max? I've always been a writer. Writing has been my number one thing since I was a little kid. I remember sitting down on my mom's computer and writing all these weird short stories. And When I was in high school, I actually found out, I, was, I think I was a sophomore or a junior that I love playing piano. I love playing piano. But at that point, I was dead set on being a playwright or being an actor because I loved stories. And, and the writing was in crafting stories. And um, when I found my voice, I put, I put them together. And I was like, hey, this feels good to not only write a story and, and, and to uh, shape a story, but to also that just pleasure I get from singing to do both. It, it, just, it just made sense to me. And I, I started doing open mics. I fell in love with the rush of performing live, which is something I've never experienced in any other part of my life so i just kind of got addicted to all the different pieces of music and here i am is there any show or a moment that stands out to you more than any that you can recall that made you say this is really worth everything i've put into this so far yeah there is one that really sticks out to me it's we have this in my hometown of bath maine there's this uh, festival called bath heritage days and it's, it's it's uh all around 4th of July, and there's this big stage they set up, and I've performed it, at, I guess, five or six times in the past uh, seven or eight years, and I remember one show in particular about three or four years ago where, again, it was my family was there, because it was right in my hometown, my friends, the fans, and I was in the middle of a song, and I just looked out, and I saw people singing along with it, and it was just like, oh, man, can, can I have this more than once? Is this possible? Is this, is this just a dream? And, and it wasn't. It was just hard work paying off. And in that case, it was very, a very focused, potent example of that because it was in my, my little old hometown. But uh, yeah, I, I would say that, was, that would be the show. And I was with a group of musicians who, for the past five years or so, it's always just been this evolving group of musicians, always transitioning. Just some of the players I can find here in Maine, especially in my hometown, is actually a surprising amount of awesome players. And, uh, yeah, I'd say Bath Heritage Days for sure. Folks, Max Adder's new EP entitled Small Town is going to be out October 12th, featuring the singles Easy and Light Up This Town via Prudential Records. You want to get out and pick this up. Support Max any shape, form, or fashion that you can. Max, how can folks stay in touch with you? Pick this up. Merchandise, tickets, whatever, how can they do that? Well, you can go to maxadder.com, and then on October 12th, you can stream my entire EP, Small Town, on all major uh streaming platforms and right now actually you can go on amazon you can go on itunes or spotify and stream my single easy because that's already out before i let you go good sir would you care to do a promo for the show yeah sure this is max ader and you're listening to bod's mayhem hour everybody stick around we got some great great music coming up and you only hear these interviews right here on bod's mayhem hour and bod's mayhem radio network for all interviews, go to Bod's Mayhem Hour's Facebook page. You can also go to the YouTube link that's also with these interviews when I post them on there. So, Max, thank you so, so much for being on the show, man, and best of luck to you, good sir. Thank you so much, John.